Hello everyone, it's Lisa and I'm here with Sean Petit's design team. My very last video for you. I'm kind of sad. I wish it could go on and on. But here we are. Let's work on this together. I had a whole bunch of really great stencils picked out in my stash. She provides you with a lot of wonderful stencils and I can't wait to keep creating with it. I'm working on an MDF board and I think this is 9 by 11 and you could see that I showed you it was um, one that was used already and I'm using the opposite side putting down my matte medium and I'm working with some collage papers just putting down some music paper that I had in my stash and then I returned to, to kind of the basics and I pulled up excuse me some old book pages and some um just things that i had in my stash and i really wanted to use um things that i started with so clearing that up with a old credit card smoothing out the matte medium and here my book pages and music is dry and I'm just using a little bit of antique white and some tan and a dry brush and adding that paint to the background, not totally covering up the background, but giving it a little bit of dimension with the colors of paint and pushing the music notes and things that are real bold to the background so that we can have something that's a little bit more uh, muted. I have a lot of elements that are going to go on this piece and my inspiration was definitely my garden this time of year. It has lots and lots of beautiful flowers blooming and two of my very favorite flowers, I think the most favorite flowers, would be my large daisies and my cone flowers and they are the inspiration like i said for this piece so um, i've got that background dry and now i'm using a little bit of fluid acrylic and the color is paints gray and i just wanted to add a little bit of blue to the background because we're going to have flowers um, not to really um, create a sky per se but just to have something um, for those flowers to pop on the color. Just added a little bit of water. Going back and forth with my brush and water and getting that background um, the way I like it. And so just giving it a little bit of a dry here. Everything is dry. And now I wanted to put some alcohol on the piece and kind of pull a little bit of that paint up. Um, this is a great technique that Sean uses all the time and you can see it just kind of peels the paint and the paper up a little bit and um, makes a really great texture. So just using that dry paper towel and here I've got a little bit of a peel going on and I thought I would just embrace that and use it to my advantage. So everything is dry again and now I'm thinking about what I'm going to do. This stencil is called Daisy One, I believe, and I will have everything listed for you. I have Daisy One and Daisy Two. And I'm going to use my white gesso and just a clean makeup sponge and I'm going to put those daisies in the background here. That stencil I'm using right there is Daisy 2, excuse me, but I will be using Daisy 1 also. So I go ahead and use my gesso and put that through the stencil creating this really cool background with all of the beautiful daisies. And there's three different sizes, so I do the large ones first, then go to the medium, and then go to the small. And if the flowers are not right next to each other, 
I just continued on, but if they were overlapping, I did give them a little bit of a dry in between, so I didn't pull up the gesso from before. So look how it looks, all those daisies in the background there. Now I'm using a little bit of yellow paint, and it's a creme coat again by delta and the color is antique gold and i'm going to use a little bit of a sea sponge and go ahead and put the centers of the daisies in and i'm just kind of blending it out a little bit with my finger and i noticed that that yellow was a little too bright so I calmed it down a little bit with some gesso as you see there on my piece of packaging that I use for my palette a lot of times and just go ahead and blending it out with my fingers so it's not a perfect circle in the inside of the daisies and um, I'm really liking how this background um, is working out at this point I'm also going to use a little bit of embossing powder on this piece and that is something different that I um, hadn't ever used before on a piece of mixed media. Here I'm using some heavy gesso and I'm pushing it through that same stencil. I wanted a few just um, daisies just to really pop out from the background to the foreground here and using that um, heavy gesso really um, added a great bit of texture and another element of surprise to the piece just using a palette knife and going through there using my finger and a dry uh, paper towel to clean up any excess that happens to get on the side and I needed one more and just didn't want to have any empty spots. And then I wanted one to go off the edge on the bottom there. There, that looks really good. I knew what I was going to put um, on that middle right portion. So now everything is dry and I'm going to use my daisy my Daisy One stencil now, and I'm going to use a piece of tissue paper, and I'm going to um, make these into cone flowers. I know the stencil is Daisy Two. I'm sorry, Daisy One. That's hard to hard for me to figure out, but I want the, the, this layer to be cone flowers, and so I'm using my archival ink. And the colors that I have, that purplish one is thistle. The green is library green. The color of orangish yellow that I have there is orange blossom. And then, of course, we're going to have a little bit of brown coming up and that's potting soil. So I'm using my makeup brushes and I'm just creating a lot, uh, a lot of these cone flowers on my tissue paper. And um, remember that you can turn your stencil over if you want your flower to go in the other direction. Don't be afraid of that. Use those stencils to your advantage. And you will see that I did maybe um, four of the flowers quite bold and bright and then two of the flowers not as bright i wanted to have some that looked like they were closer up and farther back um, so that's why i did that i i wanted some to just to be a little bit different so i think now i will go and finish this off camera and you'll see the finished product here so here's my a um, bunch of cone flowers. I'm using water on a brush, clean brush, and just um, making a line of water there going around the cone flowers and separating them. 
and trying not to let my fan blow them away in my craft room here and being careful not to rip the tissue paper too much. Now that you have them separated, you can go back in with your wet brush and get a little bit closer if you would like. I like to get as close as possible so you don't have all of that tissue paper hanging off. But be careful because the more you work with it, um, the easier it gets to rip. And you see that my fan is blowing things all over. So I do turn that off so that I don't have that problem anymore. Just remember when you're looking at your project at this point, if you are going to try this, that you're going to have all kinds of other elements going on your piece. You're going to come back with your charcoal. You're going to come back with paint. You're going to, I came back with um, my new uh, soft pastels, which I absolutely love. I call them my box of chocolates. Now, here's where I'm using my um, potting soil archival ink and another of Sean's stencils that I absolutely love. And it's called Background Words. It's one that I just um, purchased and I never knew how much I loved it. I've used it like three or four different projects in the last two months. And it just has really great uh, font for backgrounds. And this is this little area that I'm using. It says, fear less, hope more, wine less, breathe more, talk less, say more, hate less, love more, and all good things are yours. So isn't that just so appropriate for the times that we're going through right now? Oh, I just... Just um, every day, just praying to God that we can get through this and we can all get back to some type of normal. When I see my friends um, on the weekends or if we get together, which we try not to, but you know, you have to, we're human. We need that human contact. We, we always just say, we just never knew how good we had it. You know, before we took things for granted. So maybe this is, uh, our awakening that's supposed to say, yeah, you, you shouldn't have been complaining before you had it so good. I'm not sure. I, that's just my two cents worth. But here, look at this background. Super, super duper cool, isn't it? So we're going to give that a quick little dry and I'm going to come back and you know what I'm going to do next. I know you know. You could guess. We're going to put down that wash and I always use my burnt umber and water. And usually I have a little jar, but I was kind of impatient today, I guess. And I did it right on my plastic, that uh, paint on that piece of packaging that I'm using as a palette. The paint underneath was dry, so I thought, well, I'm just going to go for it. And I'm adding water, and I'm just going to put that wash over the top of the piece. And this gives the greatest dimension. It pulls those daisies out. It pushes the words back a little bit. It just, it's just, I just love this technique. And I'm so thankful for all of the things that Sean has taught me. And we're going to give it a spray with water. And we're going to let it run and just be so beautiful in all of those nooks and crannies. And just make such a beautiful background. I really, really enjoyed this piece. Just using a dry paper towel there and going back and forth until we have it the way that we would like it. See where that piece of paper ripped off there and you can see the background? Really cool. I love that. So there, I have it the way I like it. And I'm going to give it a dry. And everything is dry here. So now we're going to work on a sentiment. And the one I pulled out is from a sheet of sentiments that you can get... Um, in Sean's shop. Um, 
and it's just different sayings and the one that I thought was appropriate for right now was do what makes you happy. I'm going to put a little bit of my brown um, paint over that with some water so that it is not so bright white. I wanted it to match the background a little bit. So do what makes you happy. I think that's very important and you know it's very important for what we're all going through right now is that you know being happy and doing what we can for our friends and family and neighbors and just taking care of each other. Now I'm just putting down those tissue paper cone flowers that I had made with my archival ink and I'm just kind of seeing where I would like them. So I think I have an idea here and I'm going to use my matte medium and go ahead and give a nice layer of matte medium underneath the tissue paper and I'm going to go over the top also so that that tissue paper kind of melts to the background and um, holds down that comb flower and no one will be the wiser. You'll never even be able to see it in the end. So I kind of wanted this one to go off the edge a little bit. My paintbrush is um, dry and a soft paintbrush so that I don't rip that tissue paper. And I am being um, quite careful. It looks like I'm going really fast, but I've sped up the video so that you didn't have to watch this go real slow. So I decided to put the two kind of faded ones over to the right and then the four bolder ones over to the left. And the reason I decided to do that was because I knew I was going to put a uh, rusty cone flower as the focal point and I wanted um, those cone flowers to the right to be kind of in, way in the background. <coughs> Just putting my last ones down here and it's all right that I'm going over those daisies that I put with the heavy gesso. It looks really, really great. Don't worry about it. We're going to have everything all fixed up in the end. And then just putting that last one down. Doesn't that look just great? All right, now I need to stop messing with it. I wanted to put down my sentiment and I just cut it so I could do uh, two different levels there. So do what makes you happy. And I'm using my matte medium to put that down. And when that is dry, we're going to use this wow embossing powder in a color that is called where did I put that? Here it is. It is called Rusty Copper. Now, how I got the idea of doing this is kind of strange. This last weekend, my husband and I were on a motorcycle ride and um, we were out in the countryside and at this person's house, they had this great big flower. I mean, it must have been three maybe four feet uh, wide and maybe six feet tall of a big comb flower. And it was just made out of that rusty tin. So I thought, oh, wouldn't that be neat if I could duplicate that? So here I'm shaking up my wow embossing powder called crusty, crusty copper. Yeah, crusty, not rusty. And I put down some um, embossing ink 
and this one is by Wow. It's called Mixed Media Embossing Embossing Ink with Brush. It has kind of like a a brush, like a um, nail polish brush. And I put that through the stencil. Then I put the embossing powder over the top, and then I heated it with my heat tool and it gave this really cool, rusty looking flower as the focal point. Love it, I absolutely love it. Now here I'm showing you that I mixed up some paint and I didn't really have the best color of cone flower to match. But again, remember, we're going to go back over the top of these things when they're dry with our charcoal pencil, maybe our Stabilo All pencil. We're going to add our stems with paint. And then I said, um, I'm going to use my soft pastels. And in the end, if you don't have the exact right color, you can recreate with the process of using all of those different elements. And so that's exactly what I did. Um, I had some brown and I'm going to mute that bright fuchsia color down and I'm just trying to mix to get the right color because the one that I had there that I just painted with seemed really really bright I mean like neon pink bright and I didn't really want that so you just keep playing with it and you just keep testing out the colors and keep on going. You can always add another layer of paint. You can always fix it. So here I was using some real light um, uh, gesso with the fuchsia and making a light pink and creating the leaves of that cone flower with my brush. And you just keep going and creating until you have it the way you like it and you will know you'll know when you're when you're finished the piece will tell you now I want to thank Sean so much for having me on the design team I remember when I made the design team way back last year so much has happened in this year I just cannot believe it and I believe that um, having, um, being on Sean's design team gave me the courage to go ahead and quit my job, which I did in August. And I had a wonderful, wonderful year all planned with craft shows and workshops and all types of things coming up. But you know, things happen, life happens and Everything has been canceled, so um, I will look forward to possibly doing those things next year. But I just want to let Sean know that I am so very grateful for this opportunity to work with you, and I have learned so much, and I'm so grateful for you. So here I decided to switch to my Stabilo pencil and I'm using that with some water. Now sometimes it gets really really black so I'm using my damp paper towel just to dab it up a little bit. Remember the Stabilo pencil is water soluble so you can take it off and I've got um, water up at the top there and my brush and I just keep dabbing it in there making it all work until it's the way I like it it all comes together in the end here I'm back to my general 6b extra soft uh, charcoal pencil and back and forth and working on it dabbing it up a little bit if it gets too dark back and forth I think Sean says it, it's always a dance when you go back and forth and and you just keep going until you feel that you have everything everything done
Now be sure to um, check me out on my channel. I have a YouTube channel. Also, I have Pinterest, Instagram, and Facebook page. And I have a really great um, Facebook group that I have. And um, it's called Everything Paper and Glue. And that's a real fun little group. So here I was looking for some colors to um, pull out of my soft pastels. So that reminded me, don't get too crazy on these flowers because we're going to finish them with these beautiful soft pastels. And here I have uh, one color of green and I'm just adding that to it and blending it with my finger and not, not being, you know, too crazy with it it's it's art it's it's supposed to be you know beautiful and fun and it's making me happy so I'm doing what makes me happy so I like to say that this box of soft pastels felt like a box of chocolates when I got it it was just like oh my gosh Am I going to be able to use it? And, and absolutely, I, I've been trying to use it on almost everything I do these days in mixed media. I would like to incorporate it into my card making. So maybe I'll try and work on that um, in the near future because, boy, these are, uh, what do you say, the cat's meow, huh? I just love them. So many beautiful colors. And you can see how the comb flowers are turning out now. Just absolutely beautiful. And when I'm pulling it towards me there, um, I'm actually blowing off some of that chalk. I didn't want to smudge too much of it. Um, I wanted just to kind of blow off any excess. Now I'm using a brown underneath the flowers here and some of the petals and I'm using my application tool that I have from my uh, pan pastels and it really makes an awesome shadow underneath those leaves and underneath the flowers so I really liked how that technique turned out and it, it just made the whole thing uh, pop those flowers gave it gave it such depth and dimension here I'm using my white pastel pencil and just adding some highlights there and blending it a little bit with my finger but kind of you leaving it very um, bright white so the brown underneath and the bright white on top really makes this piece up. I have lots of um, shots, uh, photos at the end for you. So please stay to the end and check them out. Thank you so much for watching my video. Thank you again so much, Sean, for having me. I am sure that we will keep in touch and I would um, just love to thank you so much i i owe you a lot and um, we'll talk again soon i'm adding that black border like sean always does and i just have to do it too because i love the technique enjoy the photos we'll talk soon leave comments below i would love to hear from you and i hope everyone has a great week and we'll see you again thank you thank you for watching